kids being bullied, sometimes to death. It is a story you see in nearly every headline today, but sadly, it's a story we were covering as long as 18 years ago, right here on 2020. And yet there's certainly nothing old about this problem. In fact, it seems the passage of time has only made bullying worse. Listen to this, 160,000 kids a day miss school because they're too afraid to go. But it only takes one child lost to destroy a family. Until now, you've heard mostly about the victims, but tonight we'll also hear from the bullies themselves. Why do they do it? And more importantly, what do they say is the solution? Hey, Tim. It's a lot clock, our first a lot clock. Yay! Keep going. See, I can do it. <laughs> David and Tina Long adored their 17-year-old son, Tyler. He was a type of individual that could be in the middle of a crowd, not know nobody's name, not know anything about them, and strike up a conversation and be just so at ease. You envied that about him? Too. I envied that, I mean, because that's not me. That was him. Made you proud? Made me proud. Tyler enjoyed normal kid things like karate, Guess what, Dad? I'm winning! video games, he even aspired to go to college. You doing your homework? All the more impressive because Tyler had Asperger's syndrome, a form of autism, which mom says gave him a unique personality. And what, what did that mean in terms of his daily life in school? What would the kids say? What would they do? He would point out the rules to him quite a bit. Asperger's kids are very rule oriented. They like uh, things the same every day. And so if someone was talking in class, uh, I know that he would say, you know, we're not supposed to be talking. That's the rule. And, you know, I think that just irritated a lot of them. They saw him as something different than what they were. What mom saw as a virtue made Tyler a target at school. They would take his things from him, spit in his food, call him gay, faggot. And just from one day to the next, it was continuous harassment from the other kids in the classroom. The Longs say this was a constant, well-known pattern of bullying that they brought to the school's attention, but nothing happened. We started complaining to the school very early on. Right away? Pretty, yes, yeah. right away. And what did they say? You get the same old adage, boys will be boys. You know, how can I stop every kid from saying things that shouldn't be said? What do you want me to do, Mr. and Mrs. Long? I've done all I can. They say this went on for years, and eventually their fun-loving son disappeared. I just remember the last couple weeks looking back that it wasn't there. I mean, he just seemed like he wasn't, he was a hollow person. They had taken something from him. They had took his pride from him. On October 17th, two months into his junior year, Tyler Long changed out of his pajamas into his favorite t-shirt and jeans, strapped a belt around his neck, and hanged himself from the top shelf in his bedroom closet. So I stepped into the room, and I found Tyler in the closet. At that point, I rushed over here, picked Tyler up, tried to relieve him pressure off his neck and I started screaming for Tina. I couldn't get the bell off his neck. So Troy brought me a knife and I cut the bell off his neck, laid him down. <laughs> we checked to see if he's still alive. <laughs> but it was too late. Even after Tyler's death, the Longs say school officials denied any wrongdoing. The perception that the school is a haven for bullies is just not true. Uh, do we have some bullying problems? I'm sure we do. All school, all school systems do. Uh, but is, is a major overarching concern in our high school? No, it is not. The Longs say the school even refused to have a moment of silence in Tyler's honor. So they say they were forced to file a lawsuit to get some answers. You try to change the law. You try to change perspective. You try to change administrators, teachers, anybody who comes in contact with these kids. And if we have to start where we live in our county, 
in our town. And that's where we'll start. Do you think about what is the message you would want to have given Tyler if you would have known where he was, if you would have known where his pain was taking him? If I had to do it all over again and I knew what I know now, he probably wouldn't be in that school. And if he would have come home and said, can I please drop out of school? At this point today, okay. The thing that I think was so hard was seeing so many families and kids that just can't get heard. Lee Hirsch has spent the past year working on the Bully Project. Pretty much a good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. Embedded in the homes of families like the Longs. He, he will, he'll post that on Facebook. No matter how many times the parents have been to the school, how many phone calls, how many letters, their child is still heard, uh, being taunted, cool. being harassed, being called names, being physically assaulted on nearly a daily basis. So troubling a trend, the media started keeping a body count, beginning with Phoebe Prince. At only 15 years old, she killed herself, supposedly after being called an Irish slut constantly at school. Unrelenting bullying online and off is what drove South Hadley High School freshman Phoebe Prince to hang herself in January. A band of Massachusetts teens will stand trial, having pleaded not guilty to charges of criminal harassment. And in just the last month, five kids have taken their own lives, all related to bullying. Whose death has sparked a vast debate life. over gay bullying. bullying. 18-year-old Tyler Clemente, the latest to lose his battle. The college freshman in New Jersey jumped off this bridge. Reports soon surfaced the cause may have been his humiliation at being exposed online by classmates who secretly videotaped him during a sexual encounter with another man. Kids whose lives were over before they'd barely begun. Families left with nothing but painful memories, like the Longs. It's hard. I mean, our lives will never be the same. But this is a special room for me. I mean, me and Tyler spend a lot of time in here playing video games, talking. And I miss my son. I always will. But that sense of loss was somehow not shared by all. Students coming forward and saying that other students, including some of the bullies, wore nooses around their necks um, after they had learned of his death to school and got away with it. 